Last time on 1 vs 100, we saw Dennis almost defeat his 100 opponents. But in the end, Chris replaced him and made swift work of all but one of his adversaries. And now he's back with just one left to beat, and that's David. Can he do it? We're about to find out. Welcome to 1 vs 100. Saturday night. Join us in the National Lottery 1 vs 100 arena as we play the most competitive show on TV with your host, Ben Shepard. Good evening and welcome to 1 vs 100, the show where one contestant takes on 100 opponents. Chris here is our contestant from the last show. He has got one opponent left to beat in the 100 and that is David. At the moment, Chris, you've got £16,500 in the bank. Crucially, you have no dodges left. You get one question wrong now, Chris, and you're out. You're going to win no money whatsoever. David over there will take your place. However, if you beat David, you're going to go home with £67,500. That's a lot to play for. It certainly is. How have you been since we last saw you? Um, trying not to think about it too much. Just sort of trying to relax and stay calm. Feel this a little bit fatalistic about it. You know, I've got this far. If I win all the money, it's fantastic. If I don't, well, I've had a really good run and a great time here. David, over there, do you think you're safe? Do you think you're going to take Chris down? No, he's a, he's a very worthy opponent, but, you know, always confident. Viewers with digital satellite or free view, you can play along at home right now by pressing your red button. Good luck to you. Chris, are you ready to play? Yes. David, are you ready to play? Ready. Good luck. Let's play one versus 100. <laughs> Let's get your first two categories. Art or entertainment? Ooh. I'm going to go for entertainment. Well, let's have a look at the entertainment question. For what does the JK stand in the name of radio duo JK and Joel? A, James Kennedy. B, Jason King. Or C, Jordan Klein. David, your six seconds starts now. David has answered. Do you know who JK and Joel are? I, I know who they are, um, but I'm not altogether sure what JK stands for. Um, I don't think it's Jason King, because that was the name of a character in an old TV fantasy series. I am going to go for... A, James Kennedy. Chris is saying A, James Kennedy. You've got £16,500 at the moment. If that turns green and David's got it wrong, he could be going home with £67,500. If that's the wrong answer, after all this time, <laughs> after all this time, you'll be going home with nothing. OK? Is the answer A, James Kennedy? Chris, I'm afraid it's wrong. It was Jason King. Oh. I am so sorry. <laughs> Wasn't to be your night tonight. So near and yet so far, it can be a very cool game. You have been a wonderful competitor, though. Thank you very much for coming and playing. Chris, everybody. <laughs> Lucky for Chris, he's going home with absolutely nothing. We need to see how David got on with that last question, though. Will he be the next one to take on the 100? David, you won't be surprised to hear, got the question right. You are the one. Please enter the arena. Yeah. <laughs> the new one to take on the 100 is David Williams. David is proud of his Welsh roots and would love to travel on the Trans-Siberian Railway from Moscow to Vladivostok. Ooh, sounds chilly to me, but then he'll need to be ice cool to beat the 100. David, we welcome. 
Come on. Up here you are. You've made it. <laughs> you're the one. That was quite a battle, wasn't it? Amazing. So obviously you're from Wales. Whereabouts in Wales are you from? Um, it's a little village called Carmel. Carmel. Not like California, not a no, sunny, no, no. but that's what it's called. I understand you're a bit of a gardener. What sort of things do you like to, to grow? I'm a vegetable man. Yeah, OK. And I want to grow the perfect onion one day. <laughs> well, that, that, that's like an ambition? It is. It is. <laughs> it's very competitive, onion growing. I'm intrigued. Give me the secret of a perfect onion. What, what are you looking for? It's the shape. Just like that. That's an interesting <laughs> shaped onion. <laughs> OK, then, David, you are the one. These are your 100 opponents. I'm going to ask you a series of questions, and you're going to answer. The 100 are also going to answer. Get just one question wrong, and you're going to go home with absolutely nothing. But, remember, you can dodge up to three questions if you're not sure of the answer. David, are you ready to play? I'm ready. 100, are you ready to play? Good luck. Let's play. One versus 100. So, for each question, you get two categories to choose from. Let's have a look at your first two. <laughs> Events of 2008 or food and drink? I have to go for food and drink because uh, recent memory is not so good, you know, when you... Very recent memory. OK, yeah. we're going to go for food and drink. We'd like the food and drink question, please. <laughs> Which drink is sometimes known as Adam's Ale? A, beer. B, cider. Or C, water. Members of the 100, you have six seconds to register your answers, starting now. The 100 have answered. David, Adam's Ale, do you know what it is? Yeah, straight in water. It's water, is it? Yep. Positive? Positive. OK. David thinks that it's sea water. If it's wrong, we're going to be going home. Adios, yeah. Let's see. Is it sea water? Yeah, no problem. Good start. <laughs> question is how many of the 100 got that question wrong? Wow, there's loads of red there. <laughs> 49 got it wrong, David. That means you have £49,000. It is now you versus 51. Yeah. <laughs> OK, now that you've got some money in the bank, you can boost your winnings by playing your double. You can also guarantee your survival by using a dodge. However, the price of survival will be that I slash your prize fund in half. Having said that, and most importantly, you will stay in the game, OK? Good. Let's get your next two categories. <laughs> leisure or music? I don't have much time for leisure, and I'm not very good at music, so... <laughs> <laughs> OK, we'll go for leisure. Would like the leisure question, please? In poker, which of these would be the winning hand? A, four of a kind. B, full house or C, Royal Flush. Remaining members of the 100, you have six seconds and counting. They've answered. It's all or nothing. I'm an all or nothing person, so I'm going to go for uh, doubling up on this one. You're going to double this one? OK. They would like to employ his double. Which one do you think, David? I'm going to go C, Royal Flush. You think it's Royal Flush? I think it is. Maybe thinks it's C, Royal Flush. Is the winning hand C, Royal Flush? Yes. Well done. OK, so... So far, so good. So far, so good. We need to see how many of the remaining members of the 100 got it wrong. Not bad. 16 got it wrong. £16,000, which we're going to double, which means you get £32,000 added to your prize fund, which stands now at £81,000. More importantly, it's now you versus 35. All right. <laughs> Your next two categories? Yeah. Let's do it. Celebrities or history? 
have to go over history. You're not up on your celebrities? No. OK. Let's have a look at the history question, please. Which of these was not one of the seven wonders of the ancient world? A. Colosseum of Rome. B. Colossus of Rhodes. C. Hanging Gardens of Babylon. Remaining members of the 100, you have six seconds and counting. Do you know the seven wonders of the ancient world? Yes. Ah. So you know the answer to this? Yes. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Simple as that. OK, which one of those do you think it is? It's A. It's A, Colosseum of Rome? Yeah. OK, David thinks it's A, Colosseum of Rome. If this answer is wrong, you're going to go home with nothing. Is it A, Colosseum of Rome? <laughs> Yes, it is. Well done. <laughs> Playing very well, David. Thank you. Firmly in control. You've got that bit right. We need to see how many of the 100 got it wrong. We want to see as much red as possible. How many got it wrong? Eight of the remaining members got it wrong. That's £8,000. Your prize fund goes up to £89,000, David. It's now you. Versus 27. <laughs> so, we need to get your next two categories up. Let's have a look. Human body or films? Human body. Human body. OK, let's have a look at the human body question, please. The word dosopathy is used in connection with afflictions of which part of the body? A, back, B, brain, or C, feet. Remaining members of the 100, you have six seconds and counting. OK, so here we are. Question of the human body. Do you know a lot about the human body? Not those, no. You don't know. You don't know any of those. You don't know what dorsopathy means. You're going to dodge it. You're going to dodge this I'm one. Dodge it. You don't fancy having a crack. You've been uh, on target so far. Well, I, no, I, I'd say it's back, but uh, it's too risky, so I'm going to dodge. Too risky. Okay. There's eighty-nine thousand pounds there. We're going to have to halve that. You're willing to take that yeah. hit? Okay. David would like to employ his first dodge, please. If you had to go for one of those, which would it be? I'd have gone for back. You would have gone for the back. Yeah. Uh, David's gone for A, back. Was it a good dodge, or should you have hedged your bets and gone for it? Is that the right answer? It oh. was. <laughs> You've lost half your money, but you're still in the game. You need to find out how many of the remaining members of the 100 got that wrong. Only five. You've got rid of another five, so your total after the dodge, David, is £44,500. More importantly, it's now you versus 22. <laughs> Let's have a look at the next two categories. Actors and actresses or bonus dodge. You have knocked out over 75 of your opponents, which means you get the chance to earn that extra dodge. But if you get the question wrong, then you will be out, and one of the remaining members of the 100 will take your place. Which of these two are you going to go for? Actors and actresses. You don't fancy the bonus dodge? No, I don't need it yet. OK, you've got two dodges as it is. We'll take the actors and actresses question, please. Which film actress has the title of Baroness Hayden Guest? Is it A, Helena Bonham Carter, B, Jamie Lee Curtis, or C, Catherine Zeta-Jones? Remaining members of the 100, you have six seconds. Baroness Hayden Guest. Any ideas? Yeah. Oh, gee. Second dodge, I think. You think so? Yeah. I would have gone for Jamie Lee if I'd have gone for it. We are going to have to halve your prize fund. Yeah. OK, we're going to employ the second of his dodges, please. 
which means that David's prize fund is down to £22,250. You think it is? B. OK. B, Jamie Lee Curtis is David's answer. Let's find out. Is the answer B, Jamie Lee Curtis? It is. It is again. The question is, how many of the remaining members got that wrong? I want to see plenty of red here. Please reveal how many got it wrong. OK, not bad. 15 got it wrong. David, your total after the dodge is £22,250. It's now you versus seven. Defeat those remaining seven members of the 100, you're going to walk away with £79,250. Really want you to do that, OK? Let's get your next two categories. Animal World or Television, David? Either of those two jump out at you? Rubbish or Television, so it's got to be Animal World. You don't watch telly? No. It's <laughs> <That's> disgraceful. <laughs> OK, so it's Rubbish or Television, so let's have the Animal World. I think that's probably a good choice. Which animal's name is derived from the Aboriginal word for drink nothing? A. Kangaroo B. Koala or C. Wombat Remaining members of the 100, you have six seconds and counting. How's your Aborigine? Not so good. Not so good. <clears throat> have you got any ideas which one it might be? I'm thinking kangaroo, but... You think it might be kangaroo? Not the other two? No. You have still got that one dodge. Still feeling kangaroo? Still feeling it. I think I'll dodge it. You're going to dodge it? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. You'll have no dodges left after this? No. OK, we're going to employ the last dodge, please. Your money has gone down to £11,125. You are still in the game, though, which is the most important thing. Which one would you have chosen? Kangaroo. You would have gone for kangaroo. OK, David thinks it is A, kangaroo. Let's find out. Is the answer A, kangaroo? Ooh, What's lucky. Koala? Oh. That was a good dodge, well played. Finally. Finally, it <laughs> was. <laughs> At last. <laughs> what we need to know, though, is of those remaining seven players, how many of those got it wrong? Please reveal how many got that question wrong. Four got it wrong. Your total after the dodge, David, is £11,125. It's now you versus three. Well done. So David is doing fantastically well, but he still has three opponents to beat. Can he hold his nerve and take home in excess of £60,000? We're going to find out after we go live to the National Lottery HQ for the first of tonight's lottery draws, which are Thunderball and Dream Number. I'm going to leave you in the very experienced hands of Jenny Faulkner. <laughs> We're live and direct from National Lottery HQ on this Saturday, the 26th of April, and we have a lotto rollover later. Here's your host, Jenny Falconer. Thanks very much, Alan, and welcome indeed to tonight's National Lottery Draws. Hey, Jenny, you had a good day today. Brilliant weather, wasn't it? Oh, my goodness, it was great. I was in the garden, had a bikini on, got yeah. the Barbie going, and now, Alan, I'm here with you. What a perfect day. <laughs> anyway, before we start tonight, I wanted to tell you all about some fantastic news from the Heritage Lottery Fund. Uh -huh. Preston Hall Museum in County Durham's just been awarded a lottery grant of 
get this, £3.7 million. Mm -hmm. Now, the funds have been earmarked for major restoration work to the building and improvements to the museum's important collections. Now, I can tell you, Jenny, that the grant is part of a £6.6 .6 million refurbishment that's backed by Stockton on Tees Borough Council. And this will ensure that the Grade 2 listed building can be restored to its former glory. What about that? It's fantastic, isn't it? OK, so to find out more about this project and much, much more, visit the website bbc.co.uk forward slash lottery and follow the links. Back to tonight now and time to make some brand new winners this Saturday evening, starting with the all-important Thunderbolt. Draw Master Martin's here to make sure everything goes to plan tonight. Were you out sunbathing this afternoon? Yes, but definitely not in a bikini. Oh, thank <laughs> goodness for that. Alan, over to you. <laughs> what a thought. OK, Martin, release the balls, please. 34 balls in this first machine. In a moment, we'll pick five of them. This weekend, we're using Excalibur and Cedibles number two, chosen for us at random earlier today by Amita Carr, who's from Lay Hill in Bucks. And the latest news from the draw team, over 114,000 tickets won a Thunderball prize on Wednesday. Four of them matched with the first five balls to win five grand apiece. Congratulations if some of that cash came your way. Jenny. OK, draw Master Martin, are we clear to proceed? Yes, we are, yeah. Fantastic. The very best of luck to you all. Start that draw. Our draw master is Martin McClure. Our independent adjudicator is Graham Nutman. There's the first one, number 10. And the next one this Saturday night. Which is it to be? Well, the answer is right there. Look, number 23. And the next. Up she comes, number four. Two more needed from this uh, first machine, and here is the first of them. There it is. That is number 32. And finally, from this, our first machine. How about that one? Number 28. OK, then, Martin, sidle over to the second machine. Now, if you would, please start that one up and release the 14 red Thunderballs. Now, remember, you don't have to match with this next red ball, but if you do, it could be good news. Jenny? Oh, it could be good news indeed. Remember, if you've matched all the numbers drawn so far, you do still need to match with this next one as well to be in with a chance of winning that top prize of £250,000. It's the all-important Thunderball, and even if you've only got one number so far, then matching with this next ball will still make you a winner. So here we go. Good luck. Start the draw. Yeah, and good luck from me too. There are 14 in there. Which one is going to be the one, the Thunderball for tonight? That is the big question. The answer is number 11. So, here are tonight's Thunderball numbers again, this time in ascending order. 4, 10, 23, 28, and number 32. The Thunderball, number 11. Check. OK, time now this Saturday night to go green for three numbers. And don't forget that all the good clothes money raised from Green Numbers helping to fund the London 2012 Olympic Games and Paralympic Games. Drummaster Martin, are we clear to proceed? Yes, it's all set, Jenny. Excellent. Good luck to you all. Start that draw. Tonight we're using Aventurine and Cedibles number seven, again chosen by Amita. And the news from Wednesday is that there were over 40,000 winning tickets, four of them, matched with the first five balls in sequence to win £5,000 each. Well done if you were a midweek winner. Back to tonight now and live on BBC One. Here is this weekend's dream number draw. The very best of luck to you. The first number tonight, let's see which one it's going to be. It's, in fact, a six. Now, if you match with that number, you're definitely in the game tonight. Two pounds is yours. Next is a four. Don't forget, in this game, you have a one in ten chance of winning a prize. Next tonight, up pops. Another green ball. Which one this time, though? That's the big question. The answer's a seven. Don't forget, there are seven tiers of prize money in this game, ranging from two pounds to a cool half million. There's another seven. Remember, you need to match with these numbers in sequence and with no breaks in the chain. That's a four. Now, if you've matched with the numbers drawn so far in sequence, left to right, you've won £5,000. That's a one. And if you got that one as well, we're now talking £50,000. This next one for the half million, which is it going to be? In fact, it is a six. So, tonight's National Lottery dream number is... Six. Four. Seven. Seven. Four. One. Six, get it. OK, thanks, Sal, and we'll be back shortly with the Daily Play results on tonight's big rollover at Lotto Draw. But now let's head back to the very dapper Ben Shepherd and one verse 100 season. <laughs> the lottery we saw David whittle down his opponents to just three so far he's got eleven thousand one hundred and twenty five pounds in the bank 
He's on course to win over £60,000. But to do that, he's got to beat these three guys here. You ready to play? I'm ready. OK, let's have your next two categories, please. Sport or theatre? There's only one sport I like, and that's rugby union. Is that going to come up or not? I'm going to have to go for sport. David would like sport, please. Which of these sports burns the most calories in an hour? A, basketball, B, rugby, or C, tennis? Remaining members of the 100, you have six seconds and counting. I would guess that wasn't the question you were expecting. That wasn't the question I wanted, no. Rugby's there, though. Yeah. Educated guess? A lot of energy in tennis, I know. The rugby, there's a few prop forwards that take it easy, so... Clasp my hands in prayer and I'm gonna have to go for tennis. Don't ask me why, but I just got a feeling. You're gonna go for C, tennis. If that is the wrong answer, you're gonna go home with nothing. I can tell you right now, David, your remaining opponents have all got it wrong. Oh. The 100 have gone, you've done it. Oh. So, you've done what you need to do, you beat the 100. I'm now gonna give you the option to bail. This means you can walk away right now, David, with that money you've got in the bank. It's £14,125. But you won't collect the extra 50000 for beating the 100. If you choose not to bail and you believe that C is the right answer and you get the question right, you're going to walk away with the full £64,125. If you get the answer wrong, you're going to leave with absolutely nothing. Are you feeling brave or are you going to bail? I can't speak. No, I can't. <laughs> don't lose your voice on me now. Oh, I don't know what to do. It's a lot of money. I'm going to gamble. <laughs> so, David, the situation as it stands. If that question is correct, you're going to walk home with £64,125. Is the answer C, tennis? <laughs> it was rugby. It was rugby all along. The sport of Wales. Well, sport. Never mind. I am so sorry. Tennis was the wrong answer. It was B rugby that burns the most calories. <laughs> David, everybody. <laughs> I'm lucky for David. He goes home with absolutely nothing. It can be a very cruel game. So we're going to be starting over. Who's going to be the next one? to take on the 100. Let's find out. You are the one. Please enter the arena. The new one to challenge the 100 is Katz Rotherham. Kath's from Kent and works in human resources. She has a big interest in paranormal and psychic phenomena, so perhaps she's already foreseen a big cash win coming in the very near future. Who knows? Good evening, Mrs. Hello. Yeah. It was worth it for that. There you go, you go. <laughs> That's the most important thing. I understand that you're, you're into the paranormal. Yeah, how I wish I'd had my cards read before I came here tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a spirit might have just entered you. <laughs> Taken over completely. 
What was that? <laughs> Catherine, we want you to do as well as possible this mm -hmm. evening. I need to explain what's going on. Okay. You are the one. These are your 100 opponents. You've already seen how it works. Yeah. Catherine, are you ready to play? Yes. 100, are you ready? Yes! Good luck. Let's play one versus 100. <laughs> okay. Let's get your first two categories. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Cities or entertainment? Yeah. You're laughing because... I'm so good at geography, I think I'll choose entertainment. OK, fair enough. <laughs> uh, we're going to have the entertainment question, please, to kick us off. Which dame of the British Empire performed at the 2007 Glastonbury Festival? A. Dame Kiri Takanawa. B. Dame Shirley Bassey. Or C. Dame Vera Lynn. Members of the 100, you have six seconds to register your answers, starting now. You fan of Glastonbury Music Festivals? Uh, I go every year. Really? No. No. <laughs> have you got any idea which dame it was that played? I think... <laughs> oh, how I hope I'm right. <laughs> I think it's... Dame Shirley Bassey. She's the one that you're going to plump for. Yeah, because I think there's something about her helicopter landing in a field somewhere on the way back. Catherine thinks it is B, Dame Shirley Bassey. Yeah. If you're wrong, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. you're going home. Was it B, Dame Shirley Bassey? Yes. <laughs> yes! <laughs> easy, easy, it's <laughs> So you've got it right. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, some of the 100 have got it wrong. Let's see. We want to see as much red as possible. Please reveal how many got that answer wrong. Oh. Only eight. No, that's not enough. Your total is £8,000. Mm. Catherine, it's now you versus 92. Some money in the bank now. You have eight thousand pounds there, which means you can boost your winnings by using your double, or mm -hmm. you can stay in the game by using a dodge. You know how it works. Let's have the next two categories, please. Dance or politics? <laughs> I'll go for dance because I can know I can use a dodge. <laughs> okay, so we're going to have the dance question, please. In Strictly Come Dancing 2007, which contestant was described as being like the perils of Paulie? A. Letitia Dean. B. Kate Garraway. Or C. Gabby Logan. Remaining members of the 100, you have six seconds starting now. Which one of those three do you think would have earned? That's... Going by the fact it's saying Pauline, which would be EastEnders, I'm kind of heading towards Letitia Dean. You do have three dodges. Oh, don't say that, because if I get it right and I'll get more money, that's great. But if I get it wrong and I go out, well, it won't be so good. I've um... no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm just going to go for Letitia Dean. Sure? Yes. Catherine thinks it's A, Letitia Dean. Oh, no. You've got £8,000. Yes. You've got three dodges. You've chosen to ignore those I to know. gamble. I know. If that's wrong... Yes. You're going to be going home with nothing. Rub it in. <laughs> Is A the right answer? Please don't be wrong. It was oh, B. Kate okay. Garraway. I'm afraid it wasn't your night. OK. It has been an absolute pleasure, <laughs> even though it's been brief. Thank you very much for joining Thank us. We're going to have to say goodbye. Thank Catherine, everybody! <laughs> so, sadly, Catherine made a decent start, but the 100 got the best of her. We'll choose a new one to take on the 100 after we've been live to the National Lottery HQ for tonight's big lotto draw. Jenny, can you believe it?
to shame Ben. Anyway, welcome back to Lottery HQ. Now, very shortly, we'll have tonight's big rollover lotto draw. But first, before we came on air, the draw team, alongside an independent adjudicator, carried out tonight's daily play draw, and Mr. Denny Coates got the result. I have today's daily play. Winning numbers are these. 5, 6, 12, 15, 20, 21, and 27. Jenny. Thanks, Alan. Remember, for all the daily play draw news and results, log on to the website, bbc.co.uk forward slash lottery. Right then, Alan, do you know what? I'm in the need of a good old time check. Can oh, you help me out? I can do one of those. <laughs> 18 minutes to nine, daily. OK, it really is the moment of truth. Grab your tickets and get ready to play Saturday's Rollover Lotto. Here we go then, Alan. How much is in tonight's jackpot? How about a jackpot estimated at seven and a half million pounds? Oh, that is a very nice amount of money. Okay, take it away. Okay, let's release those rollover balls. And thanks to this car, we are using Sapphire and Cenable Spy. And the news from the draw teams that over 269,000 tickets won a prize on Wednesday. Two matched with five numbers plus the bonus ball to win over 429 grand each. But as no one matched with all six numbers, we've a rollover to 231st since the lottery began. Jenny. Okay, draw master Martin, are we clear to proceed? Yes, ready. All right, from all of us here at Lottery HQ, the very best of luck. Start that draw. Tonight's update, 10.30, just before match of the day, that is. There's the first one, number 40. Last drawn just the four weekends back, 168th time as the lotto main ball. Next flight, out pops. Number 39, second number to join us midweek. 158th time, that one's been a main ball. And the next, please. Out comes the next one, which is number 16. Rolls forward as, good news if it's yours. Seen a couple of Wednesday nights on the trot recently. And the next one, that's number 37. Seen a couple of weekends on the trot. 142nd time now as a main ball, and here is the fifth one. That is number four. 400 grand of lottery cash will help a children's hospice trust in Stoke take care directly to people's homes. The sixth one tonight is number one. Did you know around one million pound of good causes cash is being spent on children's play areas in and around Bristol? The bonus tonight, 35. So, Millionaire's Row this weekend looks like this in ascending order. One, four, 16, 37, 39, and number 40. The bonus, 35. Jenny. OK, that's all for tonight, but don't forget to join Scott Mills on Wednesday at 10.35 for the midweek draws, and he'll be joined by Kelly Rowland, who's going to be performing her new single, Daylight. Tim Vincent's here on Friday at 11.35, straight after Jonathan Ross for the Euro Millions. And make a date in your diary to join Alan and I next Saturday, 5 past 8, during 1 verse 100. Now, though, back to Ben. See you soon. Unfortunately, we have to say goodbye to Catherine. She's gone, but how many it went with her? Let's see who also got that question wrong. So there you go. Of the remaining 59, who will be the next one to take on the 100? Let's find out. You are the one. Please enter the arena. The new one to take on the 100 is Carol Dennis. Carol is an office manager who enjoys poker and embroidery. She's been learning to drive since 1970. She's spent thousands on lessons. She's written off three cars and still can't drive. Let's hope she finds defeating the 100 an easier challenge. Welcome. Lovely to see you. And you. Looked like you were quite shocked. Uh, ecstatic, shocked, happy, everything. So yeah. here you are. Uh, clearly you're not from, from down south. Where are you from, Carol? I'm from Sunderland. County Durham. County Durham. Are you a yeah. big Sunderland fan then? Huge. So obsessive. Obsessive <laughs> Sunderland fan. Yeah, obsessive. Do you follow them a lot? Everywhere. Home and away and the reserve games. Everywhere. So you could do with some money to afford the season ticket? I really could. <laughs> <laughs> you are the one. These are your 100 opponents. You've seen how it all works. Carol, are you ready to play? I'm ready to play, Ben. 100, are you ready to play? Yes! Good luck. Let's play. One versus 100. <laughs> OK, let's have the first two categories, please. Myths and legends or people and places, Carol? Well, myths and legends I know nothing about. 
So people in places could be anything. So well, it's red and white. I'll go with people in places. Sunderland colours. Sunderland colours. It's a good sign. <laughs> people in places. In which US city is Graceland, the former home of Elvis Presley? A, Memphis. B, Nashville. Or C, Phoenix. Members of the 100, you have six seconds to answer, starting now. Fan of Elvis? No. Not at all? Not at all. Any idea where he used to live? No, my mum and dad have been, and I'm trying to think, because they brought me a, you know, lots of memorabilia back. Memphis, Nashville, or Phoenix? Phoenix is in Arizona, Nashville's Tennessee, Memphis. I think it's Memphis. I don't know, so I'm just going to guess with Memphis. You're going to go with A, Memphis? Yeah, I really don't know. If you got it wrong, you're going home. Carol thinks it's A, Memphis. <laughs> is that the right answer? That's a great guess. Let's find out how many got that question wrong. Ooh. Only seven got it wrong, Carol, which is £7,000. It's a start. It's something. It is now you versus 93. <laughs> OK, so you've got some money in the bank, which means you can now boost your winnings by using your double or stay in the game by using a dodge if you don't want to have to answer. Okay. Let's have a look at your next two categories. History or television? I'm going with the red and white. <laughs> I'm staying with the red and white, so television. There's a theme here, Carol, <laughs> There's a isn't theme. there? <laughs> OK, we'll have the TV question, please. Which classic children's TV programme first featured the character Windy Miller? A, Camberwick Green. B, Chigley, or C, Trumpton. Remaining members of the 100, you have six seconds and counting. Which classic children's TV programme first featured the character Windy Miller? I know it's not Chigley, and I remember watching Camberwick Green and Trumpton with my two girls. I can't remember if it's Camberwick Green or Trumpton. I know the song as well. Camberwick Green. You think it's Camberwick Green? Yeah. Are you sure? 90% of me is telling me it's Camberwick Green, but Trumpton was very similar. Two of them. I'll dodge. You're going to dodge? Yeah, I'll dodge. I'll stop in the game. OK. Carol would like to employ her first dodge, please. As you know, this means we halve your prize fund. It's gone mm. down to £3,500. You don't have to answer, but you're still in the game. Which one of those were you erring towards? Camberwick Green. Camberwick Green. She thinks it could have been A, Camberwick Green. Is Camberwick Green the right answer? Right. Yes, you were right. It is Camberwick Green. You're still in the game. What we need to find out now, though, is how many of the remaining members got it wrong. Please reveal who got that question wrong. Looking wow. good. 35 of the remaining members got that question wrong. Your total after the dodge is £3,500, Carol. It's now you versus 58. <laughs> OK, let's go on. Two more categories, please. Pop music. Or words and language? I know absolutely nothing about pop music unless it's from the 70s. So it could be modern stuff, which I know nothing of. So yet again, my red and white words and language. It's all playing into your hands. <laughs> we'll have the Sunderland colours again, please. Words and language. The adjective antediluvian refers specifically to things that happened before which biblical event? A. The flood. B, ten plagues of Egypt, or C, birth of Jesus. Remaining members of the 100, you have six seconds, starting now. anti 
Lady I Love You. Do you use the word much? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Every day. All the time. The flood. The flood. That's the answer you think That's, it is? I can't think of anything else. I don't think it's the birth of Jesus and plagues of Egypt. No, that was Joseph. Carol thinks it's A, the flood. Is A the right answer? Yes! Great right instincts! I've heard of it! I've heard of it. You're going to start using Antidiluvian now, aren't you? Absolutely. You got that right, which is great news. We're moving on. We need to find out how many of the remaining members of the 100 got it wrong. We want to see as much red as possible. Please reveal who got that answer wrong. OK, 19 people got it wrong. That's £19,000, Carol. Your new total is £22,500. It's now you versus 39. 39. <laughs> Let's have a look at your next two categories. <laughs> Cities or fashion? It's red and white. Let's try with fashion. It's worked so far. I'm sticking with it, red and white. We'll take the Sunderland <laughs> colours again. Obsessed. We're going to go for fashion, please. <laughs> Everyone has a system, Carol. No Not matter how mad. Time. What relation is the designer Donatella Versace to the late Gianni Versace? A cousin. B niece. Or C, sister. Remaining members of the 100, you have six seconds and counting. <laughs> have you heard of the Versace? Mm hmm. Do you know the right, answer to this, this one? This type thing? Yeah. Very similar. Spangler. Yeah. Donatella's tell us that orange person with the long. <laughs> <laughs> She's Very glad orange. you said that. Um, she was his niece. She was his niece. We've got £22,500. We've still got two dodges. And your double. I'll pay me double. Because like I'm pretty double. sure it was his niece. Yeah. Okay, Carol would like to employ her double on this question, please. If you get the answer right, every member you eliminate will be worth £2,000. You think it is? Niece. B. B. Niece. Carol thinks it's B. Niece. Is the answer B. Niece? She was his sister. I thought she was his niece. I really did think she, she was, was his, his sister. Niece. Yeah, I thought I was right. Carol, I am so, so sorry. Well, that is the wrong answer. You had managed to knock out 61 of your opponents. It's not your night. I'm afraid you're going to go home with nothing. Carol, everybody. <laughs> so sadly, Carol wasn't able to beat the 100 digital viewers. I certainly hope you had more luck. Join us next time when a brand new one will take on the 100. They could win enough money to change their life forever. See you then. Good night. Yeah.